Hello everyone and welcome to another one of our videos. Today I'm going to be showing you how to replace the water pump on this M104 engine. This is in my W140 1995 S320. And the reason that everything looks half disassembled is because it is. I'm in the middle of replacing the radiator, and while I'm in here replacing it, I want to go ahead and replace the water pump since I was able to get a brand new genuine Mercedes one, and know that this cooling system is ready to go for another 10, 15, 20 years. Um, the reason that I'm doing all of this work is because this car runs hot in traffic, and I think a lot of that, now that I have the radiator pulled out, was due to the fact that the radiator was covered in garbage, and airflow through it was very, very severely impeded. But I want to replace this water pump just because it is fairly old. It was replaced in 2005. It is now 14 years old. So it's about time for a new one, just judging by the Mercedes schedule of things. Um, so what I'm going to do is go ahead and start by loosening all four of the water pump mounting bolts after I've taken off the serpentine belt. I already cracked loose the hardest to get to bolt, which is gotten to through the behind the power steering pump in between the water pump and the power steering pump uh, mount point i used a wobble extension 13 millimeter socket on the wobble extension and then a long quarter inch drive extension along with a quarter inch drive ratchet to break that loose all the other four should be easy to get to three of them are 13 millimeter one of them on this particular car is an allen head i don't know if that same configuration applies to all m104 engines or not so what I'm going to do is go ahead, pop the serpentine belt off, which is really easy to do. And then I'm going to go ahead and start taking off the water pump the rest of the way. There are a couple sensors that you're going to need to remove as well, but I'll speak to those whenever we get to it. Okay, at this point, I'm about halfway through the water pump removal, and I'm going to just tell you a little bit about what I did. I've pulled all of the hoses out, pulled the bypass hose here. That was super easy. Pulled the uh, heater valve hose over here, I believe is what it is. That was pretty easy as well, a little bit harder than this. Um, pulled the bottom bolt out that I showed you at the very beginning of the video, pulled the other lower bolt out on the back side of the water pump, and whenever I started to pull this Allen head bolt out right here, I ran into the issue of not having enough clearance to have the swing arc necessary to loosen it enough to put the wrench back on again to loosen it another sixth of a turn. So what I did was had another person hold the belt here and here with the belt still on the engine, and was able to crack all three of these water pump pulley uh, bolts loose. This pulley needs to be transferred onto a new water pump anyway, so that needed to be done regardless. And what I'm going to do is pull the pulley off now after I pull the serpentine belt off, and I'm going to then have enough clearance to be able to take this bolt out. The last bolt on the back side should be really easy to get to, and at that point all I need to do is pull out this sensor, which I have loose, and I've unplugged this sensor right here on the top, and I'm going to take that out after the pump's out. So it should be pretty much home free getting the pump out and I will let you know if we have any other difficulties pulling the thing out. As you can see we have the water pump out now. Super super simple if you just follow the instructions that I gave in the last clip should go perfectly. Um, once I got the water pump out I cleaned up some coolant that was dried up in here. Um, not from me from a previous water pump replacement from when this was replaced back in 2005 and I also cleaned up the ceiling surface right here with some scotch bright just to make sure that any of the corrosion that was on there on the inside of the o-ring is not going to impede any kind of sealing whenever I install the new pump. So what I'm going to do is get the new pump and install the seal kit per Mercedes terminology which is basically a freeze plug in a flange that's not used on this particular engine and I'll show you what I'm talking about and kind of how to go about that and then from there I'm going to go ahead and reinstall the water pump and start putting everything back together. So let's move on over take a look at the new pump Take a look at the old pump and we'll go from there. As you can see, we have the new water pump prepped and ready for installation. You can see on this old one, this is a replacement water pump, non-original, because it has this optional flange on the back side with a freeze plug installed. This is the old water pump. What I did on the new one was install the supplied freeze plug, but I siliconed over it just to ensure that if there's any kind of weeping, that it's sealed. This is something that is recommended from what I understand in the most updated Mercedes service manual for this engine. And I wanted to go ahead and take care of that on this one. Now, this one which was replaced in 2005 by a dealership, it was not done, but I'm doing it on this one per that recommendation. So what I'm gonna do now is transfer over the remaining parts from the old water pump. You can see I already have the pulley 
I need to remove this sensor here and transfer that over and as well as the thermostat housing. Once I've done that, this guy should be ready for reinstallation into the vehicle. At this point, I have the new water pump in. Everything is torqued down. This bolt right here, the one in the back and the two lower ones. Um, I haven't put the thermostat housing on. I haven't put the sensors in yet because what I'm gonna do next is leak check as best I can without starting the vehicle, this new water pump. So what I'm gonna do is replace this hose, which is, in case you're curious, part number 140-830-1396. If your hose happens to be cracking, good luck finding one. It took me about a month, month and a half to find one, and they are no longer in production. So from there, once I've gotten this hose replaced, what I'm going to do is fill through the top of the water pump, the engine block, with distilled water until it's full. I think it's going to take about a gallon to fill up, and I'm going to make sure that it's filled up to the point that it covers the o-ring and I'm gonna let it sit overnight without starting the vehicle. And then from there, what I'm gonna do is <clears throat> fill up with however much distilled water I, I used, the equivalent amount of coolant, whenever I actually go to fill the system. So again, what I'm gonna do is fill it up through here without anything else connected, and as best I can, leak check to see if any water seeps out of that O-ring, just to make sure it's sealed. The only reason I'm doing that is because the sealing system for this water pump is rather poorly designed, a face seal in, in this kind of orientation where you have to slip the water pump in at an angle is not ideal. Um, so again, that's why I'm checking it. If it were any other kind of sealing mechanism, I probably wouldn't be worried about it. So what I'm going to do again is fill it up and I'll be right back with that. I have the windshield heater hose replaced, the one that goes from the side of the water pump to this valve assembly over here. And what I've done now is fill up the water pump with water up to basically the end of this uh, lower radiator hose water neck. I'm going to let it sit overnight. That's going to allow me to know whether or not any water is leaking out from the O-ring face seal down here or the freeze plug in the back. So I'm going to let it sit overnight. We'll come back. If everything's good to go, we'll continue on with the video and button everything else up. All right, we've now come back after letting the new water pump sit overnight filled with water. Nothing's leaked out. As you should be able to see on the camera, the water level still is about where it was last night. So we should be good to go as far as the seals are concerned. You can see I have the thermostat housing back on. I have the thermostat in there, which was a fairly new thermostat that I had put in uh, with a brand new gasket, which was provided with a new water pump. And now all I need to do is put the two remaining sensors in, and we're going to go back to finishing up the radiator replacement job. So at this point, if you're not replacing your radiator, all you're going to need to do is put everything back together as far as the water pump goes, and then put your hoses back on, and you're going to be done. For me, since I'm replacing the radiator and all the hoses, it's going to take a little bit more work on my end, but this pretty much wraps up the video. It's not as hard of a job as some people say. Some people say it takes 6, 8, 12 hours for them to do it. This took me about an hour and a half to disassemble. And I don't know, maybe an hour and a half or two hours to reassemble everything and transfer over all the sensors and everything. And that's including filming time. So really, I think it's a pretty simple job. Shouldn't take too terribly long. And with that, I want to thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.